Welcome to This is Concrete, a podcast where we speak with the people whose work revolves around concrete and coatings. Let's get to what you came for. Hello, Chad Gill here. I am the host of the This is Concrete podcast, where I talk with leaders in facilities management, architecture, contracting, and more. This episode is brought to you by Concrete. Concrete is a concrete grinding and polishing Coatings company with nearly 20 years of experience working in commercial, industrial, and residential markets. So whether you need smooth transitions for warehouse traffic, show-stopping lobby floor, or a seamless concrete accident wall, we can provide the skill and imagination you need to make your concrete uncommon. Visit them at thisisconcrete.com and learn more about concrete today. All right, so joining me today is Dave Epp. He's a second-generation contractor, the president of Epp Foundation Repair in Lincoln, Nebraska. And he himself has 30 years of experience and is a self-proclaimed roughneck, passionate about empowering employees in the construction industry. So this ought to be a great one, Dave. We've been looking for you all our lives. <laughs> Thank you for coming on. It's good to be here. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. So you can't learn much about you uh, without seeing Facebook posts and videos and um, just your passionate experience and your employees talking about the culture in your company um, and and in the team that you have built there. And that's I mean, it's it's impressive, man. It's fantastic. How are you how are you pulling that off? Yeah, so um, I've been doing this for about 30 years and I watched my well my grandpas were farmers and then my um and and small business owners and my dad was a contractor my whole life and so I just kind of I kind of thought maybe I was just going to go down that route you know just be just be a grinder every single day be a roughneck and just go out and come home every single day dirty walk in the door at the ripe old age of 70 75 80 and then maybe that's when I'd hang my boots up and about 10 years ago, um, me and my dad were partners at that time. I had kind of decided, you know what, I think that there's, I think there's more to this. And I think there's more to this through empowering people instead of me doing everything and me doing all of the books and me do, pouring all of the concrete and me fixing everything. Um, I think it was, I decided it was time to start finding people and giving them the empowerment to go out and do it and treat them like it was also their company. And so that's what I started doing is I started finding people um, that really that would be bought in. And, and to be honest, uh, in the beginning, it was tough, but I started paying people more than they were even worth. And I'm just so, so passionate about the construction industry and the blue collar industry that we're kind of losing a little bit in America, I feel that um, I'm I'm, 10 years ago, I told my wife, I says, I would love a book written about this company, not about me, but about this company and how we kind of did to people what Google did to people. You know, you'll hear those Google stories where you can bring your dog to work and you can have sick days and you can have vacation days and you get bereavement and all those things. And so I just decided then we're going to do it and we're going to figure it out and we're going to have vacation time and sick time. And we're going to pay people uh, a great, great living wage and retirement and all those things. And it's, it's kind of like the, you know, the movie field of dreams, if you build it, they will come. And that's really what happened is we started just pushing that agenda that, it's employee first, not co- com- uh, customer first. And our employees really believe that. They really believe that they are what matter and the customer is what comes second. And since we believe that, our customers are really well taken care of because every employee that walks in our door truly believes like they own the company. And it's awesome because we didn't mention it. Um, you know, if you're listening to this one and you're like, oh, okay, I'm sure he can do that because he's probably like an elevator guy because they're the only ones that I can see that can afford to do this. You know, I mean, they can run a job site like none, but your foundation repair, this is- Yeah, so we're 30 years in about 25 of those. We actually were a concrete, primary concrete company. And um, we are now at the, we're gonna, I think we just surpassed 60 employees, but 
Chad, keep in mind about three or four years ago, we were about 25, 30. And about five, six, seven, eight years ago, we were maybe 12. So when I started implementing these things, it was four people, five people, six people. And we just, uh, and my dad was my partner and he's just a wonderful man and, and also believes in the same theories that I do, that you empower people and treat them like they're an owner and pay them like they're an owner and they will act like one. And what does that mean? Like when you treat them, you know, like sometimes you meet people and you're like, I treat everybody like family. And then you meet them around their family. Like, I don't want you to treat me like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, like right. treat me like an owner. Wait a minute. Does that mean you got to be late all the time or what? You know, yeah, what you no, I think the biggest thing is, is um, actually when you, when you say that a few things come to mind for me that we've done over the years is extreme transparency. We kind of let people see behind the curtain. Um, we would talk even, a, I mean, with just regular foreman and or laborers or whatnot, we would talk even a little bit about our P&L. We would, one thing that I did is I posted out in our shop the wage that everybody made. That was probably the biggest one. My dad fought me a little bit on that. And so out in our shop, we have about 11 or 12 maybe different positions in our company. And the wage is posted with that position. So if somebody walks by and says, knows that that person over there is a senior journeyman or a foreman or a master foreman, they know what wage that person is making. And what that did, that extreme transparency and just even talking about the wage, it stopped, instantly squelched all of the bickering and moaning. Because if somebody would walk up to you and say, why is he making $25 an hour and I'm only making 22, we would have a, a complete breakdown of, hey, this is what he's doing. It's on the list. It's on paper. You can see it. You can smell it. You can, you know, you're looking right at it. And so we would be able to sit down with that person and show them then what we called kind of the roadmap of if you want to do that, if you want to make that and have those benefits, this is what you need to do. This is where you need to change. And so that was probably the number one thing that people, I just freak people out when I tell them that. They're like, what do you mean you told people wages? I'm like, everybody in our company, there's maybe a few that don't, but almost everybody in our company knows what everybody makes. And that transparency has just set us free to just to be able to grow and and for men and women to want to climb that ladder because they they can see it they 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 can physically see if i want to make what that person's making if i want those benefits this is what's expected out of me and that's what i find so many employees don't and business owners they miss the mark they don't give expectations People will call me if, if I'm coaching someone or helping someone or walking with another business owner, <clears throat> they'll call me and they'll say, hey, I'm really mad at this guy. He's been late for three days in a row and I want to, should I fire him? And then I'll, my first question to them is, does he know the expectations are he will be fired if he's late? Well, no, he should just know that. No, people don't just know things. You have to tell them things. You have to set expectations. And I think, Chad, the other thing that we do really, really well is I have always sternly believed, um, and I'm very different here than some people, home comes to work. If there's a person going through a divorce, if a person is struggling in their home, in their marriage, if somebody's grandma passed away, um, that, that's going to come to work. And it's our jobs. It's, it's my job as a business owner and a leader, more importantly, a leader to facilitate a place where people can feel safe to bring that to work. And yeah, we don't want to, we're not running a therapy session here. It's not a counseling group, but we, we are leaders. We do talk a lot about, Hey, Johnny's going through this and, and, and Dan's going through this and Chad's going through that. And we come alongside them and maybe it's, you know, maybe it's rehab. Maybe, maybe they have an addiction problem. And, and I feel like it's our job as, as, as the leader to walk that path with them. And maybe we pay that bill. Maybe we give them the time off needed to go, to go get that self-correction. So that's what, 
that's what our leaders in our company do really, really well is they walk next to people and they listen and they help. And that's and been funny. really powerful. I agree with you. And, and I think it's, I think it's amazing. Um, and I think I hear people, talk about it, but you talk about somebody who's going through a personal thing. Why is that your problem? Well, you've invested in that person. You've committed to that person. And, and like I told you, we tell them when I, every time I stand up in front of um, our company, and I'm going to continually say our company, um, I just happen to be the guy that, that, that has the tallest box with the most risk, right? But whenever I stand on that box and, and be able to address the people, I, I preach to them that it's our company. So if it's truly, if I'm going through something, the, I mean, I have to bring that to work and I need their help. And I feel if I truly believe like it's their company and treat them that way, then I should be the same way. Now, obviously, there are situations where you can't let people take advantage of you as a business owner because we, I have 60 plus people responsible for me, myself and other leaders making good decisions with people. But I just feel called and led um, to, to do that. More, more, more importantly, I just feel like that's kind of my calling as a leader and a business owner to just find people where they're at even if they're damaged. And I think that's, uh, I think sometimes people are reluctant to, uh, to, to, to say it. It's, it's profitable to take yeah. care of people. I mean, I mean, you can make money being good to your people. And I think you're a shining example of that. I'm saying, you know, it's, you know, these things, yes, you know, uh, you know, faith's a big part of me, you know, and you're like, hey, okay, you know, this is what I'm supposed to do. There's a calling, there's a responsibility, an obligation to do these kinds of things. And I think that that is, that is key. And, but even if you meet the most cynical of people, you know, that buys into the, the culture of the company. And I think that's why you have your guys on Facebook talking about how great it is to work there and that the greatest asset in their company is the people. And I mean, that's not you. I mean, you're on there saying it, but you're not alone. I mean, it's, it's got guys that are coming out of a basement, you know, and they're coming up a two by six. I'm like, hey, yeah, this is the right. best thing to do here. Uh, so, yeah, I think, it, I think it does. It's important people understand you can make, you can do this and, and make a profit. I think that's where a lot of business people, I think a lot of business owners and or leaders feel that way. But where they miss the mark, like you just said, they are the ones saying it on social media or on the walls of their shop instead of the people, the employees and the people working there. I mean, that's where you really let them have the voice. Um, about three, four years ago, I stopped answering questions. And at first people, people would walk up to me and ask me a question and I would just smile and I'd turn around and I'd walk away. And that sounds very direct and kind of, you know, coarse and mean, but what I was doing was I was teaching them that they have the voice, they have the say. So instead of me making every decision, them walking, I just would turn, I literally would just turn around and walk away. And so they're like, Hey, are you going to answer the question? And I, then I, then I would coach them a little bit and be like, no, no. It's, what would you do? I'd always ask them, what would you do? Hey, we just had a job where we went and cut a concrete wall and we installed an egress window and it rained. Well, the gentleman that, that put it in or something, something got missed and some caulking didn't get done and it flooded. So now it's, it's, it's not in the warranty or anything, but it's our job as a company, I believe, to walk next to that customer first and, and fix what happened. But then it's also our job to walk next to that person that did that window and, and help them understand, you know, that's on us. That's extreme ownership, right? So if somebody leaves a tool at a job site, who's, who's responsibility? This is how, how I always teach it. If somebody leaves a tool at a job site, whose responsibility is that? Well, it's the person that left the tool, right? That makes sense. Yeah, it is. But it's also the supervisor that was supposed to check that job site. It's also the supervisor who's responsible for training the supervisor. It's also our general manager who oversees all training. And then it's mine because I'm the one that sets the SOPs. So leaving a tool is not Johnny's fault altogether. It's out, we have to own that together. And that's why, you know, we're really big in, on extreme ownership and, and 
to even be a foreman in our company, you have to read that book and you have to go through a six month long training in a sit down training where you dive in and um, have to do it with other people in our company uh, about extreme ownership and learning our core values. Man, that is fantastic. And that's, that you're talking about Jocko Willett and uh, Extreme Ownership, great book, great series. I mean, it, it's amazing. And, you, and you're living it. I mean, you're, you said you're operating through, you do a lot of EOS or you're yep. in the EOS. So it's an entrepreneurial operating system with Gina Wickman. Um, and, and then Jocko with the, with the Extreme Ownership. Where it is, and this is, I want to, I love that you have this in your thing, and discipline equals freedom. Um, yeah. Where is that coming from? So, um, yeah, that's one of our core values with, uh, of the three. And uh, so by having discipline, it's doing the hard stuff when you're supposed to, regardless of your feelings at the moment in time. You slowly lay the foundation in achieving your goals. So for us, what, what more importantly is when a guy walks in, he's like, hey, right now we just, we went through a pretty bad drought. Now it rained six inches and every job site is muddy. Every contractor has dealt with that where you walk through the mud. It, and it's not fun, right? You got to be disciplined to be able to put your mud boots on. You got to be disciplined to go out there and work in, in, you know, kind of adverse conditions. You also have to be disciplined. We preach this very hard in your personal life because it affects you coming to work. If you want to go and drink a 12 pack every single night and you get a DUI, that's undisciplined and you affected your family, yourself your coworkers, and everyone around you. You need to be disciplined enough. It's just even about health. We preach a lot of health around here and just staying fit and in shape because we are in the construction industry. And I think everybody should, should take health seriously. But, you know, um, so for us, it's it's really, we, we, we just, it's preached. It's interesting when an apprentice walks through the door and he's been in the company maybe a month or two. And you hear him over there talking to the guy, the guy's, you know, man, it's, it's not going to be fun today. It rained two inches. We're going to be in the mud. We got to, we got to go fix this wall or pour some concrete. And it's, it's, and the guy's like, you know what, man, we got to do what we got to do. We just got to stay disciplined and we got to just keep our eye on the ball and we got to get it done. And that's just, I take so much pride when I hear other people in the company really buying in and doing it. And you see it spill over to their, their personal life. I, I have, I can't even, I don't even have enough fingers on both hands of how many um, men have come through this company and changed their lives for the better when it comes to alcohol or drugs or um, just anything, anything in that kind of realm where it's a vice just because the core values in our company really helped them because the people around them were disciplined. And they, they did buy into extreme ownership. And so for like, when you talk about where the rubber meets the road, I, I've got to think I know the answer to this question, but how hard is it for you to recruit and find people? It's still difficult. Um, we are on the heavy side of the pay scale. Like I told you, I, I put my money where my mouth is. Um, like for us, a starting wage, just a starting foreman wage, which it's, you can become a foreman pretty quickly in our company is $25 an hour with full benefits. And so it's still difficult. And part of that is just, the, you know, everybody keeps blaming the generation. Well, instead of blaming the generation, instead of getting mad and saying, well, my grandpa was this way. Well, I was this way. Why don't we figure out what this generation wants and needs? Instead of complaining about it, why don't we sit down like where the rubber meets the road and figure out, let's talk their language. Let's figure out what do they need? What do they want? It might look different for them. I'm 45 years old. My son is a foreman in our company and he's 20. It looks completely different for him than it looked for me. So that's that's where I really... I differ from instead of complaining, let's, and, and yes, yeah, you'll catch me, you know, we'll have a Diet Coke and I'll complain about, man, these kids just don't get it these days. We all do that, right? But that's not going to get me anywhere. You know, one thing, one huge thing we do in our company is if you have a problem with anything, you are not allowed to bring that to anybody unless you have a solution. 
So the problem is we can't find people. So what is the solution? So that's why we pay more. We have vacation time and PTO and sick days and 401k. And um, so th those are our solutions. And I think we've been recruiting from what I heard a little bit better than some around us. And I think it's just because of the empowerment of employees. And do you see a good retention rate? I mean, you're keeping people. I mean, I, we this, have you know. a great retention rate. Yeah. So we have a couple of 20 year, 19, 17, a couple 15s, few 14s, 13, 12, 10, eight, several sixes. So we've, our tenure here is really, really good. That's fantastic, man. And I tell you, it's, like you said, this generation and stuff like that. I mean, I'm 49, so I'm right there with you. Um, and, uh, and it's like, yeah, it's not a problem to be solved. It's a challenge to be managed. And you just got to figure out it's it's different. You know, you can complain yeah. about it, but that's not going to make, it's not going to fix more walls. It's not going to pour more concrete. No. You just got to figure out what it is. You know, and one of those solutions, Chad, I'll bring up, it, I think this would help people is, was our transparency. When I, when I told my dad I was going to go post job descriptions with wages on the, on, out in the shop, he about fell over backwards. Imagine a man that was born in the fifties who's been a constraint. You don't, you didn't talk, right? You were not allowed. His theory was if you talked about your wage, you were terminated. That's how he grew up. If you mm -hmm. talked about your wage and you told somebody his old boss, they would have fired you. And so he, but he would, he would be the first to admit that, Hey, it worked. Then that's maybe one, one thing that maybe some people can take away from this is art. I set expectations on there. There's an out in our board. Uh, the, our first position in our company is called an apprentice, you know, just like most other, and they know, Hey, these are the things I should be at in this company. This is the wage I receive. This is the insurance I receive. This is the sick days I receive. And then we, and then we continue to go. And so we're very structured. You know, we go from apprentice to journeyman to senior journeyman. And then we have a crew chief, which is like a right-hand man. And then we move into a pilot foreman and a pilot foreman program is us training a person to become a foreman because a foreman is kind of where the rubber meets the road with the customer. They're the ones doing the job. I created a six month long training process, very tied together with extreme ownership in, in Jocko's teaching. And we have about a 68% dropout rate of that. I actually think that's great because guys remove themselves from the from the program because they're like i'm not ready i thought i was i thought i wanted to be ready i thought i wanted to be a foreman but i'm not and so when they graduate it then into a foreman and there's a big pay gap between that so you when you're a crew chief you're 20 when you're a foreman you're 25 so and i think that's another mark i think a lot of people miss is these these little pay pay a man what he's worth that is You'll, every leader in my company, when they sit down with a guy, they, you, you hear, hey, what are you worth? So we'll ask them, what do you believe you're worth? And, and sometimes they're way off, right? You know, sometimes, uh, you know, sometimes, it, you know, we'll have some 18 year old kids walk through the door and they're requesting $36 an hour. And you're like, hey, buddy, you know, you don't got a lot of life experience here. You haven't poured a lot of concrete. Uh, you're, you're probably not worth that. And here's why. But we find that to be very helpful to us. The first thing we ask is, what do you think you're worth? And most people, most people, I would say, are very spot on and accurate of their worth in our industry. There, there's, there's maybe five or 10% that kind of miss the mark a little bit. And then, but then, hey, it's our job to coach them and show them why they miss the mark and sit down with them and explain to them business with transparency and say, hey, I can't pay you that. And here's why. But if you want to make that, here's how to do that. And so that's what that path has done for us. And so, the, and they continue to graduate into master foreman, graduate foreman, you know, team leaders and stuff. So we, it's all out in our shop. They can scan it with a QR code. They can pull it up on their phone. They can read what we call um, the EP leadership pathway. And it's right there. It's transparent. And they have expectations set and what they get from those expectations, if they deliver on those expectations. Man, that's, what a bold move. And, I, and I'm just sitting here thinking how many arguments, how many, I mean, you know, wages are kind of the big non-secret secret too. People yeah. know what other people make. You're not, 
you posted it and it made it official, but most of it was probably known, but it was a lot of animosity. And I'm thinking, man, you probably avoided a lot of, uh, of arguments or frustrations. I mean, one-on-one, -on -one, you know, quarterly reviews. I mean, how much better is it? like, Hey, here's, here's what, here's what yep. it's been great. I mean, Chad, you were, we both grew up doing it and we both were construction workers. I mean, we knew what everybody made, right? When oh, I was yeah. a 25 year old kid, 30 year old, you know, if, whatever I knew what at, we talk at lunch, you'd have a, you know, you'd go out and have a beer with a buddy after work. And he'd be like, man, where are you at? And you tell him where you're at. And he'd tell you where he's at. And you're like, man, that stinks. You, how are you making two more dollars an hour? So I just was like, you know what, we're going to try it. And I, I'm in a peer group. And I told my peer group about it and they were all kind of, Whoa, really? <laughs> and, and it, it's worked really, really well. And and some of it too, some of these ideas I've gotten from my peer group, I, I'm a big fan of them. And so uh, of, of other being in a peer group with other leaders, just to sharpen your iron. So I don't know, I, I felt it, it, it's worked extremely well in our company. And I, and I always tell people about it. And so it's, it's taken some time. It's definitely taken some time to build and you have no, it, it's crazy how long a uh, job description takes to write until you actually sit down and try to write down exactly what a senior journeyman in your company should do <laughs> about when you get it right. you're still looking at it yeah but when you get it right when, when it, you get it right it works well it's a lot easier to find the right person when you know what you're looking for so yeah for sure man that is fantastic I, I, um this has been great dave i'd I say it's um and you're gonna so you're starting coaching and you're helping other companies get into this um yeah i'm just kind of starting to dip my toes in the water there a little bit i don't have an official platform or anything and i haven't really rolled anything out but it it, it is a passion of mine to help others I, i've spoke at several events and um seminars and stuff like that for empowering employees and teaching other business owners and just leaders um how to empower people and so it's it's a direction I'd really like to go down and a path I'd like to explore. I love it, man. I think I, I think the, the world needs more of that. It, it really does. It needs you know men teaching men to be men and leaders. Yep. And, and, iron sharpens iron. Is one yeah. man sharpens another. Uh, for sure, for sure. Um, and and, and it, you know it's not a man based thing. It's a person based thing. I mean, it, Absolutely. It's the same thing. Yeah. It, it's interesting. We, as we've grown now, we've gotten several females in our office and even a few in the field. And, and now, you know, we're really empowering even just, you know, when you think of construction, you think so much of male dominance and it still is, but there's even a lot of females in our office and stuff. And they have, they have stuff too. They, they have baggage just like the men. And so, you know, my wife really buys into this and she kind of heads that up and leads um, just that empowerment and and we've got some great women also now in the construction industry that my family is so passionate about and I it's funny uh, people ask me what I do and I just I'm, I humbly every time I'll just say I'm a construction worker and I'm so proud even when I'm shaking the hand of anybody of how educated they are or what they do I just I'm so proud of that and I just want to carry that on to everyone else and I always tell my men, I'm like, hey, you're the professional. Don't forget that. When you are fixing something or pouring concrete for a heart surgeon, you're the professional. He called you. He called us because we know what we're doing. When you're on his table, he's the professional. But don't sell yourself short. And, and, and that's another just to leave you with a bit of advice to give other leaders is treat people like they are professionals and they'll act like professionals. Don't treat them like they're not because then they won't act like one no i think that is super wise super wise man dave thank you uh yeah. really enjoyed speaking with you can't wait to see uh see when you roll this thing out start taking it to others man i think you i think uh i think you owe it to them i mean it's that yeah. this, this is a great this is great information and it's uh, a lot of people are struggling i gotta think a lot of people are going to be staring at that shop wall thinking i don't know <laughs> but but the benefits man that's uh, that's tough but awesome i love it yeah thank you so much man we'll absolutely thanks time. for having me Ted. yes sir take care thanks for listening to this is concrete we look forward to you joining us next time be sure to click subscribe to get future episodes